Wake up, honey. There's a new, a difficult game about climbing, but it's it's not climbing. It's more about hiking, but it's not really hiking. It's rolling. I don't know what to say about it. It's the game of Sisyphus. There is a part of me that thinks that um, that Sisyphus game on Twitter went viral, and then they the, this company. My guess is they decided to simply make a like fast follow of it to preempt the release of that one, but I don't mind doing streamer bait games now and then. I almost made the stream title today, streamer bait, don't mind if I do. I'll start with the regular boulder, please. Hang on, this is important. Did you see that Peloton dropped what? Dropped what? The message was purged out of chat too quickly. Did you see that Peloton dropped what? Help me, this is important. Is dropping free memberships? I didn't even know they had free memberships, honestly, brother. Looks like I missed out on a golden age. Move, run, jump, okay. Seems about right. You can zoom in, you can zoom out. Move, run, jump, okay, okay. If you already mentioned your daily Peloton bit. No, because people get mad because they hate us. They hate us because they hate us. I did PB again today um, on the 60 minute discipline. Pretty good PB. I PB'd last week with a roughly 220 watt average over 60 minutes. Today, I think I hit 222. It was, I mean, it's like a 0.8% improvement, but that is pretty good, man. It's getting hard. It's getting difficult. Okay, 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 break, 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 break. You gotta, you gotta break grip sometimes. Sometimes you gotta break the grip. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar, by the way, with the, the myth of Sisyphus. A lot of people haven't uh, read the classics. There you go. Um, Sisyphus was a, 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 a demigod, a titan in the world of Greece before Herodotus existed. He stole fire from the gods and um, as a result, a fucking goose got to eat his liver forever. Unless his boy Sisyphus can get the rock up the hill, which he can't because as soon as he does, it just rolls down the other side. A lot of people aren't familiar with that. A lot of people... I know a lot of you were on illicit substances that have recently become legalized when you were in uh, classics class in your fucking high school. Probably had like tall ass ceilings and big plate glass windows and shit. Can I run a, uh, a, a question by you? Help, 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 help. Just hit the wall. Perfect. Why do school buses have those cooked ass windows? Nobody knows. I'm from Europe. What do you mean? School bus windows is the only domain in which you ever see a window like that. They open by you having to push two sliding puzzles uh, towards the center of the window and then smash it down as hard as you can. Um, and then what inevitably ended up happening is like some of the windows were like rusted so you would need like an eighth grader to pop the seal for you and then some of the windows like one side was rusted and the other side was like smooth as butter so you could never like if you stayed in the same seat for your entire scholastic career your right arm would be like four times larger than your left arm It's true, I'm just, I mean, many of you didn't ride the school bus, I'm sure, because you were homeschooled. But, like, if you went to, like, a, a public school and you rode the school bus, it's a different story, man. I was never, I'm, I'm still not a big window guy. I'd rather have air conditioning whenever given the choice. I don't think that's a crazy take. I think most people would probably plus two that minus the environmental concerns, but... Bus never had AC. Yeah, I, there's no reason to have AC, you know? 
half the kids got their damn windows open. You're, you're driving home from third grade like... <laughs> No, 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 no. Break the stride, brother! Huge. Huge. Hold. They didn't let us open the window on our bus? Honestly, they probably just didn't work. They didn't have the funding to, like, replace the windows. So they just told you, like, you're not allowed. Where'd you live? Texas? That sucks. <laughs> that sounds hard. I was hoping it was gonna be like, you know, fucking long beer in Norway. Okay, one second. I just gotta just gotta sneak right by you. There we go. Just gotta just gotta sneak right by you. Did you have the scholastic book fair in Canada? Not only did we have the Scholastic Book Fair, it was such an emblematic part of Canadian school existence. I thought Scholastic was like a, a Canadian company. I'm still, to this day, I think they might be. Is it possible that their headquarters are in like Toronto? Come on, buddy. Come on. Nope. Don't just say nope. Look it up. You can jump. You can jump. It's that easy. Wilkinsburg, Pennsylvania. Woof. Okay, okay. Okay, okay, it's fine. It's fine. We live, you learn, we go again. Oh. Let me guess. <laughs> Back to the bottom. There's something so merciless about you having to run all the way back down. Can you can you jump off the edge and then spawn at the bottom? Nope. You can press R. Look at the controls while you're down there. Okay. Thank you. Ah, so there's a little nuance here. It's a directorial choice to make the control sign substantially worse than the control guide. I understand. It's like the Binding of Isaac. The run back is great. I feel like it's thematically in keeping with the rest of the, the run. I do remember um, one time on the school bus, must have been like fifth or sixth grade, I had a bucket hat that I got from the giant tiger and uh, bus windows were down, must have been like May or something like that. Kid behind me grabbed my bucket hat, threw it out the window. As soon as it was clearly out the window and gone, he started to cry. Which I think is like a perfect encapsulation of what it's like to be a kid. It's like you just are incapable of looking at the short-term consequences of your actions. Like he threw my hat out the window and then as soon as it was out the window he started to cry because he knew he was going to get in trouble. And then I talked to the bus driver and I was like the kid threw my hat out the window. So the bus driver stopped the bus, made him get out and then go look for it in like the woods next to the road. And then he had to find it and give it back to me. And he was apologizing. I was like, it's not that big of a deal. I just like, this is a big waste of time for no reason. <laughs> then the bus driver clapped. Then why'd you report it? Because it's my hat, bro. Because it's my ass if I go home and my mom's like, where's your hat? And what am I supposed, supposed to say? Some kid threw it out the window? Like, I gotta have plausible... I, I gotta demonstrate to her that I made a good faith effort to get it back. U.S. bus driver would not stop. I, I'm sure there's bus drivers in the U.S. Not, not all of your problems are caused by the flag, okay? There's maybe a correlation... 
sure there's lots of perfectly nice bus drivers. The nicest bus driver in the world might be American, for all I know. Whoops. Can you spin it to the left, please? Thank you. What have I done? Break, 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 break! They need to break, bro! Oh, brother. <laughs> Same situation. Oh, did you see that grind though? Press R. Why would I press R? This is the this is the game. I love the picture in picture, bro. Very stylistic. Sisyphus didn't have an R button. You realize I I. I the fact that everyone treats the Sisyphus myth as if it's like the same thing as the trolley problem is mildly, it's not a big deal, but it's mildly, mildly irritating to me. I think there's a lot of parallels to life as a human being in the myth of Sisyphus. Why on earth, if I drop the rock, would I rush to the bottom to start pushing the rock again? The part where the rock has is falling that's my only break, brother. That's what it's all about. You want me to fast forward through my time off from work to get back to work. So what? So I can be done work faster? What do I do when I finish work faster? I do more work. You got to relax. You got you to embrace the climb and you got to embrace the descent. You just gave me anxiety? Good. It means there's parts of your brain you've never used before that have just been activated. I maintain, if you want to punish Sisyphus, you take away the rock. Because then the dude's just going to be bored. That might be even worse than pushing a, a boulder up a hill. At least pushing the boulder up the hill, you could be like, today I'm going to push a goofy foot. Today I'm going to push it... You know, I'm going to nollie up the hill. Today I'm going to go for a PB. You know what? Today I'm just going to stay in zone two. We're going to take it easy today. We're going to limit our cortisol production. And then tomorrow we're going to grind up this hill. We're going we're gonna to try to set a new speed run record. Atlas doesn't get breaks. Yeah, he's the dude you should be sorry for. You ever read Camus? Yeah, the one book. The Stranger. Where um, Melisandre sits on her hands until it goes numb. The one book. Spoilers. Oh, sorry, I meant l'estranger. Mmm. L'estranger. I was about to read it. I would always recommend... I mean, listen. There's a calculus, and readers are not going to love this, but I'm just being honest. I'm giving you the normie perspective. There's a calculus when it comes to choosing a book to read. You want something that is A, good, and maybe like entertaining, meaningful, yada, yada, yada. But you also want something, at least as, a, as a, someone who's not reading a ton, you want something where after you finish it, you can be part of the conversation, right? Like you don't want to be the first person to read a novel and then be like, hey, what'd you guys think about this novel? People would be like, I haven't read that shit. So you got to pick something that's like uh, well known, and then you want it. You want something. I mean, this is my two cents. So many people are like, I'm gonna get into reading, and they're like, first book, nuts on the table. We're going Ulysses, James Joyce. Nah, bro. Start with the classic that's like 105 pages. There's meaningful novels that you can finish in like you know a week of reading, 20 minutes a night before bed. Read fucking... One sec, there we go. Read The Old Man in the Sea. Shit is 51 pages. Read... I mean, I personally wasn't a huge fan of Brave New World. 
But Brave New World, probably 300, 300 pages and you, you get to be part of the discourse. You get to be part of the moment. The Stranger, 120 pages. Bartleby the Scrivener, four pages. World War Z, <laughs> World War Z, 800 pages. Like, I know where you'll find me. Where, what, what a shot, man! He put the damn English on it. I believe. Cider House Rules. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, break, break, break. Cider House Rules. I read that one. The Princes of Maine. The Kings of New England. Ether. So the, fir the first time I ever heard about Ether. I didn't know that much about Nas at the time. You got to be aware, though. And, and this is probably going to be a selling point for you now that I think about it. As soon as you start reading a John Irving novel... You got to know that that dude is obsessed with MILFs. Every single book. Let me get, where, where's the high school senior who's on his summer break and then he's going to fucking liberal arts college in September and he moves into like the guest suite of a, a, a marriage that's been going on for 22 years and like the husband travels a lot and the wife is like feeling unfulfilled. Okay, here we go. You'll never be, page three. She looked detested by me. Page five, locked in each other's embrace. I felt like there was nothing else in the world at that moment. How do you know this? I've read Cider House Rules and uh, A Prayer for Owen Meany. And which one was the one that A Door in the Floor, the movie was based on? I read that one too. That one, it might actually just be called The Door in the Floor. <laughs> Did you not see the movie? I was too young to see the movie. I had to read the book. You read House of Leaves? I honestly have not read that many books, but I have read House of Leaves. In like, it must have been like 2006 if I had it. Maybe 2007. It sucks. It's pretty interesting. I don't know. I mean, it's, it's one of those things where I feel like House of Leaves, like, when it came out, it was like a revolution. And then it had such an impact on discourse that it became, like, something to make fun of. And then as time has gone on, it's kind of had, like, that, that sort of matrix reappraisal where people are like, actually, this thing that we, like, parodied kind of owns. Okay, just hold. And go, 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 go. Me personally, we go through the, the pool cues. Help, 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 help me, help me, help me, help me. Hold, Sisyphus, hold. Hold, just hold to the wall, brother. <laughs> What's up, brother? You know what I was thinking? I, and I'm drawing a parallel here. Isn't uh, a social credit score the closest thing we have in real life to a IRL battle pass? The only thing it's missing is, is the tears. Like you have a permanent score that is impacted by your behavior in your day-to-day -day life. And does it, maybe it does unlock something for you, right? Like, I don't know, if your social credit score is high, do you get, like, first access to, like, hotel reservations or something like that? I'm sure, like, if you go too low and you're like, I want to make a reservation at a good restaurant, they're like, mm, we're standing room only. We go, we go, we go. What is he talking about? I mean, I think it was a fairly reasonable, in terms of ease of understanding, a very fairly reasonable comparison. Oh, no, no, no! Okay. I almost feel like, again, 
I think there, there's a cycle. I don't want to do something. Then the temptation is like, I know. I'll gamify it so that I want to do it. And then like eventually, like the first time you do chores with the fucking chore RPG or whatever, you're like, yes! I just got six levels of sweeping! But then eventually you get bored of the game, but like the chores keep coming and you never learn like a good coping mechanism for actually like tolerating doing them in the first place. So you do them even less than you did before. So I'm guilty of this as well, because I'm like, imagine if you added an IRL battle pass to incentivize like doing the shit that you didn't want to do. Imagine if it was like, it's the summer season. For every liter of water you save, get 35 XP, which you can redeem for like a free book from the library every 10 levels. You'd be like, oh shit, sorry, honey. Gotta skip date night tonight. I'm fucking buying a rain barrel. What if the government was cringe? Library books are already free. I mean to keep, bro. I'll go ban for ban with you in the library any day of the week. I'm in the library. I'm going to say 35 times annually. It was crazy not going to the library between essentially ages 17 and 34. And then um, for those entire 17 years going like the library, who even goes to that anymore? And then like having a kid and going to the library and being like, oh, Lots of people. <laughs> Turns out there's like, you know, dozens of families in the library at all times. Not to mention people that just need like internet access. You were in a library, Andy, during university. Honestly, I don't know what this phrase means, but I felt like people who went to study in the library and university were virtue signaling. It was like pre-Instagram, it was the way that you signaled to your friend group that you were studying. It's like, oh, I, sorry, I can't. I'm studying in the library. And I'm like, okay, my ass is studying like at home with my laptop and the textbook. I guess you think you're better than me? Like I got all the tools here that I need. I don't, what, just because you got like a coffee shop in the, on the ground floor of the library, like it beats our, our house? I don't understand the problem. So, some people, I, I can't be mad if you um are not great at ignoring the distractions that might be in your domicile then maybe the library makes sense me at age 19 i would be like well you should fix yourself me more realistically at age 35 maybe that's a smart decision that helps you get a higher gpa oh baby Plus two for empathy. <laughs> well, you get older, you realize, like, you can change, but, like, it's hard. <laughs> like, I, I work out on the Peloton now for the love of the game, but it took two years of psychological reprogramming by, like, doing the classes and chasing achievements and stuff like that to get to that point. That was two hard years, man. There's a lot of fucking kilojoules expended there. Sometimes you need a quick fix. So you're saying gamification works? I think it can, it can modify your behavior in the short term. Maybe allow you the scaffolding to build a habit to hold it in the long term. What I'm saying is I'm moving to China. I honestly think my social credit score would go insane. I'm not naive enough to think I would be like the highest in the country because I'm competing against a billion people. But I, I'm telling you, me personally, I see myself a top 20% Andy year one. And then from that point onwards, I mean, that's as bad as it's ever going to get, right? Like my rookie season is, it's never going to get, uh, Oh, I really thought it was just going to prop it up a little bit. Oh, brother. Uh, uh, take, take the barrel boost. Actually that, that barrel might save us. I thought the barrels were our enemies. I think they're actually our friends. 
Oops. Okay, just wait. Yes, no! <clears throat> wait, wait, wait. Yes! Get to the wall, brother. No! <laughs> Been watching on YouTube for a month. Excited to finally see you on Twitch. It's funny. I always think about... First off, welcome. I always think about how the vibe shift must be crazy. If you came from... I mean, if you were watching the VODs, I guess it's the same culture. But if you were watching like the Balatro videos where I'm like, now I'm gonna buy misprint. Oh, I really hope they give us a malt malter. And then you come here and I'm like, if you watch Bluey and you don't have kids, you should be in prison. You should be in hell. No disrespect, but you're the worst piece of shit I've ever read a message from in my entire life. Fuck you, 96 month subscriber. <laughs> What do you th people are saying my social credit score would be low. I'm actually a great facilitator. I move out of other people's way on the sidewalk, in the aisles, in the grocery store, etc., etc. I never make special requests at a restaurant. Like, I think my social credit score would be pretty good, man. What's your Uber rating? Well, okay, I don't know what my Uber rating is because I have only used it for like four rides in my entire life. We usually use my wife's Uber. I'm going to tell you that my wife has like a 4.91 or something like that, which is like kind of bad, actually. But the reason is I don't want to put her on blast too much. But she didn't take as many taxis as I did when I was growing up, okay? There's an etiquette. You don't wait to go outside until your Uber driver texts you, I'm here. Because that adds like an extra two, three minutes sometimes to the ride and the Uber driver is going to give you a three or a four. You always have to be outside like three or four minutes before the Uber gets there. So as soon as they pull up, you just get in the seat. You always got to go out first, man. That's, so I, I told her, I was like, you know, the Uber says it's going to be here at like 7.10. It's 7.10 right now. We got to go outside. And then she's like, he hasn't texted yet. And I'm like, you're playing with fire. Uber rating fairly close to social credit. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I'm assuming mine is high. I don't know. I don't want to look because it might call that into question. Also, I want to talk to like the marketing team at Uber. Why the fuck are you emailing me like, hey, want to take a ride? You know what your app is for, right? No one's like, oh, I'm bored. Like, let me hop in a fucking Uber. You use it to go somewhere. I got, I'm chilling. I got nowhere to be. Hey, 20% off of your next two rides. I'm not leaving. I'm in my house. I got nowhere to be, man. Think I'm going to pop into an Uber just because, like, it's on sale? Doesn't make any sense. Uber Eats, I get it, because sometimes you're like, I'm lazy. But, like, the, the car service itself? I'm like, oh, fuck. What, buy one ride, get the next one free. Quick, take me downtown. You're 3.97 on Uber? You're fucked, man. What's wrong with you? <laughs> no disrespect, but, like... Well, how many times have you written? Because you got like two significant figures in your, in your rating. So you've obviously taken like, you know, a hundred rides or something like that. In the threes, man? You know like restaurants that are in the threes on Google reviews is like someone poured like boiling hot oil on them or something like that or they were poisoned they got diarrhea there was a fire etc etc they definitely threw up in an uber okay but who amongst us hasn't done that let's not throw the baby out with the bathwater on that one lots of good people have maybe you didn't eat 
a, a heavy dinner and then you said I'll go out for a couple of drinks and then all of a sudden it's 3 a.m. and you get an Uber and you're like, yeah, it's only 10 minutes to the hotel. It happens all the time, man. Okay, hold, hold. Hold. Don't, don't, okay. Whoa, we're doing it goofy style. No. Better to throw up in a stranger's car than drive drunk. No disrespect, we all know, we all know that. I don't mean this. I want this to be instructive. And it's only my personal opinion, okay? How old are you? Because I'm done being condescended to by like people who just turned 19 online. That are like, you should not drive drunk in any circumstances. I'm like, no, I know. We solved that shit. We solved that shit like before I was even born. I'm like twice your age. I've had 20 times the adult experience as you. And you're telling me how to live an adult life? Like, what are you talking about? I'm not saying different perspectives aren't valuable, but... Like, we got to move on to the higher order problems, man. Cigarettes are bad. Counterpoint, they probably help you uh, fucking um, lock in, maybe. I don't know. I've never smoked one. They do. Fuck, man, maybe I should start smoking. <laughs> With this lung butter? Are you kidding me? No shot, bro. What if you only smoked a cigarette when you had something important to do? Like, what if it was like, oh shit, time to do my taxes. And you like broke a glass panel on the wall. That's not how addiction works? No, bro. Well, I mean, it could be worse, right? At least you're pairing your addiction. You might get addicted to doing your taxes. Next thing you know, you're a chartered accountant working for Ernst & Young. It's not all bad. Send it. This is a perfect cycle. I lost confidence. It took me like four extra seconds to get on the ramp. Take me. Don't take the, the rock. Don't take the rock. You should do Zen. I don't think I need it, man. There's there's very few times, like in my day-to-day -day life, where I need to lock in. Most of, if anything, I need like some times in my life where I lock out. Like when I got my daughter at the playground for like two hours, I need a, a fucking legal drug that helps you lock out. And the time just like, you know, you enjoy the time, but also it does hit the fast forward button. Like you're living life on 1.5x. I don't know. I, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to have to wait for the cycle. Like click with Adam Sandler. Yeah, but like not problematically, like not in a way where I would like ruin my whole life. Huge. Huge. You know what's annoying sometimes? Like, I'll come up with a sick invention. Like, what about a remote that allows you to, like, fast forward the parts of your life that are annoying? And people are like, they tried that. It's called Click with Adam Sandler. It didn't go well. Well, I'm like, well, fucking, maybe the writers should have been more optimistic. Why don't I write a movie? It's called fucking Click 2. And the dude gets the remote and his life improves, like, tenfold. It's fiction. We could just make that shit up, man. No! Oh, actually, it's not so bad. I guess we should try to go up this way then. Click, but it solves all your problems instantly. What a compelling movie. 
I want movies by worse writers with less conflicts who make more money, and I'm not joking. Dude, I'm fucking cruising. Adult bluey viewers when a movie has no bad guys. <clears throat> I'm just joking. I'm just messing with you. So I screwed up my cycle here, do too, doing the I can't. Hold, hold, hold. Sorry, that's not I can't. That's ain't no way. Ain't no way, Ying. Huge. Huge. It's not ain't no way. It is ain't no way. You're trolling me. It's just called no weighing. Oh, because of the character limit. You know who never let a uh, character limit stop them? Masahiro Sakurai, creator, inventor, and sole programmer of the Super Smash Brothers series. So true. So true. <laughs> oh, man. Creator and inventor? I, he's multi-talented. The wickedly talented Adele Dazim. You know, I saw a tweet. This is the rare, like, not controversial tweet. This is a rare tweet that's interesting instead of designed to make you angry. It was from someone that, like, I guess their job took them to Japan a lot over, like, the last 20 years. And they were like, it's a unique time in Japan right now. Everywhere you go, there's tons of foreign tourists, and the yen is so in the toilet, it's cheaper for Americans to go to Japan than it is to go to Southern Europe. That was always what you heard if you ever went to Japan. People were like, Japan's good, but it can be kind of expensive. You've, have you ever considered like traveling to like Bulgaria instead? You can get a bottle of wine for 75 cents. Nowadays, the, 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 the yen is equalized to that, man. I'm getting my tickets right now. I guess the catch is that air travel is still like really expensive, but like once you get there, I mean, it's like 250 yen salmon onigiri all day, every day. Help me. I mean, this is a gimme, man. Zip air out of Vancouver, 300 bucks. Yeah, but like, I'm, I'm not against it. I don't fly first class, but also on like long trips, I try not to fly on like the insane budget airlines because I'm always worried that either like the plane is going to collapse mid-flight or that the company is going to go out of business before the flight happens. Because uh, like there was that... What, what airline was it in Canada? Lynx? Lynx was like, Wait, air travel in Canada is too expensive. We're going to start a budget airline. And then they ran for like 18 months. And then one day they were like, oh yeah, we don't have any money and we can't refund your tickets and we're going out of business. So sorry. No, I see the problem now. I lost my grip. It was so easy to get up, but it's so easy for the ball to get down. There it goes. Here it goes. Oh, fuck, dude. Is it going 18 meters per second? This shit is like a 100 kilometers an hour, man. My Lynx flight got delayed by seven days. Not joking. <laughs> That's crazy. At least WetJet, or WestJet, <laughs> WetJet. At least Wet, WestJet just canceled our flight and then gave us another one the next day. But it was kind of fucked up because it was supposed to be a direct flight. And then the one that they put us on sent us to fucking Calgary. Then again, when I landed in Calgary, got to eat at the Calgary Airport Chili's, which wasn't so bad. Take the good with the bad, I suppose.
What's your Chili's order? Um, I've only been there twice, and there was 10 years in between them, and they were both at airports. 2014 airport Chili's order in Oakland was like kicking chicken crispers or something like that. Don't be mad at me. That's what they're called on the menu. Um, they were not good, and there, were, there was nutritional information on the menu, and it was like this meager meal of chicken tenders is like 1,700 calories. I was like, why am I like killing myself at this airport Chili's for something that tastes like a 5 out of 10 to begin with? Calgary Airport Chili's, I had the fucking Tex-Mex something bowl, something like that. Rice, tortilla strips, black beans, corn, little fake pico de gallo I'm sure they got from like a Cisco truck or something. Hold? You're gonna hold, you're gonna hold there. You are gonna hold there. You're, you're gone. You're gone. It's a pinball machine. It's 50 meters per second. It's faster than a, a, an airplane. Launch me, bro. It's a long trip. That's like 30 minutes. It's a long trip. It's a long trip down here. I don't even know if that's faster, to be honest. This is my chance to relax. I mean, now, you know what? It's great for me because I get to do the easy part again. It's like being halfway through a workout and they're like, okay, here's time for the warm up. And you're like, ACDC zone one? What are we doing here? What, what is this explosions in the sky track, man? This shit is getting content ID matched 100%. This is the Friday Night Lights fucking official OST. This is the Earth is not a cold dead place. I'm not even, I'm being half facetious. Like, it sounds like explosions in the sky, but it might be explosions in the sky. Like, this is crazy. I think I gotta turn the music off, man. I think I gotta turn the music off, dude. It's, it's either fucking... Explosions in the sky, or it's like, um, do make say think or something like that. You're right, how, could, how are they gonna DMCA me? They don't even sing, bro. Oh, you got a problem with lip syncing? Wait until I introduce your ass to fucking Mozart, bro. He doesn't even sing at all. And he can't even hear. I think that's the other one. I think that's Handel, but... Okay, take it back up. Can we get a replacement track? Absolutely. Meet me anywhere or any time or any place And I don't care, meet me tonight If you will dare, I will dare You know, you know, you know what I'm talking about? The replacements? No? You should listen to the replacements. They gotta be a beloved 80s band within a Gen Z context. Come on. Nobody knows who they are? Okay, fucking go back to listening to Chapel Roan or whatever. Any new K-pop Kate is playing for you? Yeah, yeah. Um, magnetic? Eh, 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 eh. Something magnetic. Eh, 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 eh. Super something something. <laughs> it's a good song. I think it's a good song. It's going to take something very serious to, to take Song of the Summer Crown 2024 edition from Dash by Enmix. 
But uh, Magnetic, a, a good song, good song. He knows. I mean, Song of the Summer, I, I hate to pull the wind out of your sails, K-pop fans. It's um, Steal My Sunshine by Len, yet again. But number two, number two dash by NMix for sure. Butter tarts me. <laughs> You know what I like about K-pop as someone who is not my number one genre of choice? What I like about it as an outsider looking in, I know they have ballads, but it seems like um, the music is largely like 100% unpretentious. They're like, check it out. We wheeled out a new crop of like 20 year olds to try to continue to hone the perfect pop song. They're like, this is fucking simulation number 15,135 to create the perfect pop song that's ever existed. We've cut four seconds off the runtime and added a bossa nova section in the bridge. Go. And then the fucking the eggheads in the lab coats are like, mm, uh, 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 put two more girls in, put two more girls in. And then one of them is dressed like in business casual and the other one's in like a school uniform. And then we're going to add three seconds to the runtime and we're going to add a mute to that trombone. Trial number 15,002, boop. And I, I respect it because like, I think that they're, they know, it's, it's unpretentious. Whereas when I think of like, I mean, a, American music, it runs the gamut, but the kind of like popular American music I find detestable is like self-important drivel, like Imagine Dragons or... Cause I'm a bad liar. Like it's like songs where the, the singer is like, okay, is rude, is a rude statement. It's just my personal taste. But where they're like writing poetry about their life, but their life isn't that interesting. Give me the Yola Tango, you know. Not much Friday night, pinball at the Lower East Side. I used to think about you all the time. Now I don't think about you all the time, but all of a sudden there you are. Oh, whoa, oh, oh, the damage is done. Give me some of that, not like, um, I love it when you suck me like that and when you're closer, give me the shivers. And I think K-pop, like, I mean, it seems to avoid what I'm sure is an ever-present impulse. Like, as you're... As you become more popular, I'm sure you're like, I want to write a song about my unique struggles and no one, like I'm too powerful for anybody to say no to me anymore. Maybe that's why it's a great counterbalance to have groups with 25 members so that no member can ever like rest control and then just turn it into a solo project. No disrespect to Beyonce, she's, she's killing it, but... Hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. Anyway. Yes, giving the musicians no power over the studios. Great situation. POV, you are 19 years old. No disrespect. It's, you, you can't help being 19, okay? Well, we're not doing that anymore. I'm 35. I'm not getting into arguments with teenagers online about like the business practices in K-pop. I don't fucking endorse that shit. I'm just in my own lane, moisturized. I'm bothered. We're just talking about the music being catchy, okay? I don't have any control over that. Do I look like JYP? Please tell me yes. He's looking, he's got to be like almost in his 50s. He's looking pretty good. 